So we have a question from viewers, and this has been kind of a regular, it's made kind of a regular appearance this year, uh, concern about group homes, um, uh, staffing in group homes, um, uh, PCAs, uh, the effects of inflation on trying to hire uh, folks to fill those positions. Viewers, viewers concerned about what, whether there'll be any changes in this session. Let's start with you, Representative uh, Katiza Watun. Uh, your thoughts on uh, dealing with uh, that particular issue? It, it certainly is. Um... Is, is a really important topic and uh, our PCAs and uh, caregivers um, in, in a variety of sectors, but particularly um, for uh, people with disabilities and our, our seniors who are needing some extra assistance um, kind of throughout their day-to-day -day lives, um, they need to be lifted up and, um, and given a, a salary, uh, hourly wage that matches how important their work is. Um, we've done some really good work on this in the past few years, um, make sure that these folks got a pay raise. Um, I know that it's is a part of the conversation between now and the end of the session. I'm hopeful um, that we can get them some additional um, funding because like I said, I mean, the, the job that they do um, right now, they can turn around and, and, you know, get a job at Target, maybe at McDonald's and, and earn more on an hourly hourly basis, but they're not necessarily making as big of a difference. And so lots of people go into that because they have the heart and they have the passion to care for people in their moments of need. Um, but if they can't put food on the table or a roof over their head, they're just going to have to find something else. And so it's, it's a really, it's a really big problem and um, we've got to come together to figure it out. Representative Garofalo, any uh, thoughts on what might happen in this area between now and the end of the session? Yeah, and Barry, the, the workforce shortage is affecting all sectors of the economy, but particularly nursing homes. It's definitely impacting there. And so the best thing legislators can do is they can listen to nursing homes and say, what can we do to help? And there's really two things we can be doing. Number one is by providing additional resources to them. This is a very highly regulated, highly mandated sector uh, of government. And so by listening to them, what we can do is they can't just go out and pay people what they want. We specify in law what that is. And so we should increase that. We should increase their compensation so they can have a larger pool of talented workers to choose from. But the second thing we should also do is we should listen to these providers regarding the mandates that government regulations, laws, and uh, executive rulings have put in place. Many times these group homes uh, and nursing homes are spending money on things they don't want to spend money on. Not because, it, um, and these things are not providing increased quality of care. They're not in providing valuable services to our seniors. They're just government mandates from St. Paul. And if we give flexibility to these providers to be able to deliver care in a compassionate, cost-effective way, it gives them the in added incentive to be more efficient and to allow to, to use those existing resources to compensate workers more. Senator Marty. Yes, I'm going to go with the direction Represent Kotitsa with Un, I'm sorry, I botched the name today. Um, she said about the importance of, of the fact that these jobs are paying too little. And it seems to be all the jobs that we as a society say we should care the most about, people who care for others, child care workers, people who work in, people who work as PCAs, people who work in nursing homes, the ones who help other human beings, a job we, I think, consider the most noble of all. They get paid minimum wage type of levels, and um, they're finding that they can't compete. The employers can't compete with McDonald's or other jobs that are much lower skilled, much hard, less hard, less difficult work to do. And so the only people in them are people who are people who are doing it because they really care about it. And it's not a career job, not because it shouldn't be, but because they pay so little. <clears throat> And to me, because those jobs tend to be, our economy doesn't have a way of providing them other than government funding them, which is why we have government funding for nursing homes and for personal care attendance and for child care, because the economy has never been working right for people who are providing one-on-one -on -one service. The good news is um, the Senate Health and Human Service Bill actually puts in a huge amount of money. We put in close to a billion dollars largely to increase the wages of people who work in, in nursing homes as personal care attendants and so on. And I actually think there's strong bipartisan support to do that, which is very pleasing to me because the uh, Senate majority has been unwilling to fund a lot of other things that I think are urgently needed. But in this case, they're hearing enough of the crisis from nursing homes, from people who have personal care attendants. People, I, I know one person, a personal care attendant, the guy was, 
able to be employed because he had personal care attendants who could take care of him 24 seven. Now that he's been struggling to find him, he's kind of more in a nursing home setting. He can't, he lost his job from that and so on because he's unable to function without it. It's expensive to take care of somebody in these positions, but we as a society say we care about others. So I'm, I'm very pleased that it looks like we're gonna have significant bumps in pay for this um, I mean, to the point where it'll be a few dollars an hour more for people, which is urgently needed given the state of the economy right now. And I, I'm optimistic that will actually happen yet this year. <laughs>